Hi, this is Kimberly Whitman with Heart of the Bride Ministries. The mandate for Heart of the Bride is to release the full expression of the heart of Yahweh. The recording you're about to watch is our Wednesday evening roundtable where we have invited different mature sons to release their piece of the puzzle that brings a fuller sound of our Heavenly Father's heartbeat. Be sure to stay to the end of the video to learn more about Heart of the Bride. Now, enjoy as you engage. Father, it's just such a delight right now to be together. Lord, I thank you that um, even though we are far naturally in the in distance, Father, I thank you that you model oneness and we just step in to you together right now. I thank you that we are one in you. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross. We thank you that uh, you have left that mark for us to step into by the shedding of your blood and by your broken body. So tonight we want to say thank you for that. Thank you for all that you done, you, you've done for us and all that you keep on doing. We do not take it for granted. We thank you for your body that was broken for us. We thank you for your blood that was shed for us. We thank you that you took our sin, our sickness, and that you have given us divine life. We thank you that tonight we can step into that by taking of these, your, your body and your blood, this wine and this bread. And we take that together as one right now. We thank you that as we do, we are restructured in any way that is necessary for our divine life. We thank you that you are in every molecule, every uh, movement, every part of this, of this happening. So we drink of you tonight and we say thank you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the joy of knowing you, of being one with you. We thank you that, that you invite us into the conversation with you. We love you, Lord. We give you all praise and honor, all glory and majesty is yours. I just want everyone to step into the breath of Yahweh. I'm just seeing this whirlwind swirling around us. And we're, we're, we're being, uh, how do I say this? We're, we're being collected together in his breath. Joined together in his breath. And it's from this posture, this position of oneness, this position of inclusion, this position of nothing missing, nothing broken, this position of we know him and he knows us. We are known by him and he's invited us into knowing him. Knowing his thoughts, knowing his heart, knowing his desires, and manifesting, becoming that, expressing that in the earth. 
in creation. Father, I thank you that everything that you have given to Vita to share and release tonight will be the expression of your heartbeat, of your voice, of your love being made manifest, taking on structure, taking on framing, taking on life and breath. And Lord, we partner with you in what you desire to bring into creation, to bring into the seen realm tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. just want to invite everyone to stay in this posture for a few more minutes. I just see different pieces and components in our body, in our soul, in our mindset being almost like puzzle pieces moving around, restructuring, reorganizing things so that we, the way we used to see something this way rotely the Lord is rearranging things so we can actually see something correctly or, or, or not correctly. Maybe it's uh, uh, with more revelation, with more understanding, with a greater level of clarity than before. So I just want everyone to engage that. Just allow the Lord to say yes to that. Allow the Lord to put those puzzle pieces in different places within our being so that we can see with more distinct clarity, like sharp, sharp, sharp. I see, um, it's almost like, you know, when, an, when an, an eagle is flying or a hawk is flying, their vision is so clear, so precise. And that is what the Lord is doing in our understanding and clarity. And, cl and he's, he's making it precise or much more precise than it has been. I just heard a shofar blow and I heard an announcement made The new day is dawn and the, you, you will never see things the way you used to. You will never see things the way you used to.
your eyes have already been opened. Go ahead, Greg. Um, you talking about our eyes and being just being able to see. Um, the fa the Father brought me to this understanding that uh, in Revelations, Yeshua is the one who is the only one who's worthy enough to open up the seals, and He's combined that with the reality that we have the seven seals within us. And those seven seals are aligned with the seven spirits. And the revelation, it says the seven spirits are eyes. And so I, I just see that he, he's aligned us. He's opened up our, all of our seals. And all of those seals are perfectly aligned with the seven spirits and their eyes. And it's, and it's allowing us to see multidimensionally. Yes. And I don't have any other words to explain that. But we're able to we're able to see and know in, 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 a, in, a, in every dimension of the word no means that he meant when he said that. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, Tavita. <clears throat> Before I started praying, I literally heard ancient wisdom is here. I literally heard that. And then I saw the whirlwind, the whirlwind of light around everybody. And then um, I heard the words divine appointment is now. Yeah. Wow. And whatever, I, ooh, I can feel it. This, what I don't, I don't know what he's doing, but this, this feels different. Literally divine appointment. Yeah. Yes, it is strong. It's real strong. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to just say, and I, to be to work in it, I feel like we need to stay engaged in this until the Lord moves. And so I, I just want to encourage everyone. We Tavita will share when the Lord finishes doing what he's doing, but let's engage what father has for us here and i just want to encourage everyone as as you see whatever you're encountering freedom to release that just raise your hand uh on the little button or you can just wave at me but i i feel like this is critically important for what the wa father wants to release and do what he's doing Go ahead, Lisa. I, um, what I saw is, I mean, I saw it here, but I know it's for everybody. And <laughs> literally, the, there was an opening in the ceiling, and there was a lot of witnesses. They were pulling it back to watch. They were pulling it back to look in. They were, um, the... The, the, I don't want to, I don't want to call it veil, but the, but the, um, I, I don't know what to call it, but whatever has kept us from seeing them more frequently is that, that's, that is coming off of our eyes and, wow. and you're going to be able, they're going to, they're going to, they're everywhere. <laughs> wow. There's so, there's so many, they're everywhere. Wow. So we welcome you. We welcome you.
I heard the heavenly gate has come open and I saw a key. I just saw one key. It wasn't several, but it was one key for a massive door. So it might fall in line with what um, Lisa was saying yes. about that veil. I just saw it as a gate. Hmm. And I'm also feeling oil being applied to our lips, to our mouth. Father, I, we just engage with, with these heavenly beings that you have sent and whatever they've come to bring, to release, we just receive, we receive them <clears throat> and their ministry. I just, oh God. I've been praying for months, scales or my eyes to be open to the right things always, any scales on my eyes to be removed. And then for the last few weeks, I've been seeing the whirlwind. My hands are constantly making a whirlwind. And so this is like complete confirmation that is now it is now this it's been removed and the whirlwind is here and I will I, today I kept going I was or yesterday even I was like I'll be right in there with in that whirlwind let me be wherever you need it whether it be in the winds or in the calm of it but it's like yes it's here and, and it's answered hmm. yes Kim, I just heard um, the leaven has been removed. And then it made me think of the story of Joshua, where he got taken into the kingdom and the iniquity was removed from him and he had coal placed on his lips. Yeah. And then there was a stone with seven eyes. So there's something, there's something to that. There's something to that encounter yeah. that's tied into what's happening right now. Remind, it's connected to what Greg was talking about the seven, the seven energies, mm -hmm. the, the centers, the the seven spirits of the Lord. And didn't you say the the uh, ancient ancient wisdom? Is that what mm -hmm. to be right at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Wow! I just I'm feeling like fire all around all around me. I can feel it on my skin. I can feel it on my face. When they, she was sharing about the whirlwind, I, I saw Elisha appear mm. because he was the one who was taken up in the whirlwind. But it, and it's, I, I just sense that he, he's here to help us understand that technology of how, how to create a whirlwind that allows us to ascend. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Different mm. in a different way, different dimension. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Well, Elijah, we dishonor you. Mm-hmm. We welcome you. We allow you to teach us and train us in the ways of our Father. I just felt the the <laughs> the ceiling of my room open up. <laughs> just like wait, so like, I literally felt it just open. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm so going. <laughs> and all those beings are there, you know, just <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> oh. Sometime last year, I think it was, I was outside and the sky was so completely gorgeous. And I tried to take pictures of it, but it, I couldn't move because I literally saw the faces of the witnesses, mm. the cloud of witnesses with their faces pressed in. And I was just, and now I know more and more and more, I will see that. I mean, I see it, I see it all the time anyway, but that, Yes, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Kimberly? Yes, go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, just as you finished saying about you could see the your ceiling just open up. Um, I just had this um, in my imagination. I could see like... Um, multiple doors just open up if anyone remembers uh, Maxwell Smart get smart and at the beginning of his that show multiple doors open like into a secret you know yeah uh, place and that's the word I just got that as like it's from what the, the realm of the ceiling opening up is now opened up many multiple doors for us to walk through into the secrets of others heart for us oh that's so good that's so good Ruth This is and really- by the way, oh, 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 sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I, I just realized to, to say also that each door opens up as we keep walking towards it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so good. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Tabita. I heard something random. I heard um, the voice of the nations are here. And there's seven continents, right? There's seven continents. So. Right? Yeah. There's something to that too, this the seven. Mm-hmm. Ancient wisdom. Mm. Hmm. 
I just heard the favor of God is here. Ask what you will and I will do it for you. I was just, my attention was drawn to Elijah and he, it was like he was standing waiting for me to, to look at him, like put my attention, my, my attention and my intentions on what he was, is here to release or show us. And when I did, he said, you do it like this. And he melted into father. Mm. he he just melted into him and it and it caught my attention that uh what ruth just said about as we walk closer we walk toward it and the door opens and so i just want to encourage everyone let's just walk to father and meld melt into him melt into him that, that's just the word that came to me is he melted into him. And Kimberly? Yes. Yeah, as you just said that, I just um, was getting the word enveloped. So I could just see myself being enveloped in yes. Abba's heart. And then I just um, sensed that there's such a beautiful new place for us to uh, step into becoming in this oneness with the lion, the ox, the ox, the eagle, and the man. That we, as the man in Yeshua, there's this oneness that is um, beginning to take new dimensions of meaning for us so that we know our authority, our place in Yeshua, in, the, in this place of this mystery of the lion, the ox, the eagle, and the man. Yeah, I just, is that, you know, we have this one new man. It's something about that, and it's just so beautiful. That's good. I'm, I'm watching that whirlwind that we stepped into at the beginning and it just drew us all into that place where it was, it was almost like weaving itself through us. We were becoming fluid with that whirlwind and I'm seeing it now from the inside of us out and it's starting at our feet and it's building momentum and intensity um, within us. And I'm seeing fire and lightning coming out of that whirlwind, but it's, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's growing with intensity the vibration is intent more is intensifying. The heat is intensifying.
I agree, Raina. The heat is melting us into him. Yeah. Charlie, did you have something you wanted to add? I'm sorry. Uh, what I was getting is seven, there was like seven gems or seven stones and we're lively stones. And as, as the heating and the process, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, glorifying himself. Oh, yeah, amen, amen. We are the lively stones. Yes. Jacqueline said she felt the whirlwind was also causing mortification in us. I agree. I agree with that, Jacqueline. I, I, I want to also on. Yes. I was seeing us in this whirlwind. Every one of us is Go ahead, in this whirlwind. Every one of us is in this whirlwind or vortex or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. But it's very, it's very powerful. And it makes me think of Ezekiel's wheel as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. I also want to honor uh, Union, the angel that I met when I crossed the border into Tennessee. Um, he he keeps, I keep seeing him here on my left side um, from time to time throughout this. And I just want to honor him and his role in what we're doing tonight. Um, and I just welcome him and his voice and what he carries, what he brings in what Father has, has us doing tonight and what he's wanting to release in, in creation, in the earth. And the river of life is here as well. I agree to be there. I, I just heard, oh my gosh, I just heard it's time to light the match. And when that, when he said that, it was like a, a flint, you know, the, the fire flint things. It wasn't a, a lighter, it was a flint. And it, I kept seeing the sparks coming from the flint. 
and then the sparks caught the oil that is within the whirlwind inside of us and it absolutely caught ignited on fire it's like this raging fire within us lisa go ahead wow 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 i, I just had the strong impression <laughs> that we're like peeling off this this layer of skin I don't know how else to say it, but we're literally just like taking off this whole layer of skin. Oh my gosh. I, I just thought it was weird. <laughs> oh. I, right, right before you said that, Kim, in my whirlwind, because I love the Chronicles of Narnia and I've read it multiple times, but in the very last book, Aslan is saying, further up and further in and I could I was like running up the whirlwind but right before you said about the fire it was like I saw a street lamp just like <laughs> a big oh. lamp and then you said that and I told Jamie on when I saw him this weekend that we're coming out of the skin so it's <laughs> I'm just about out of my mind right now I'm <laughs> so <laughs> Every picture I've ever colored, my little colorings, everything you're saying is exactly what's sitting in my wall in my bedroom. Oh my cool. gosh, that's just so cool, and that's ah! so, so, <laughs> isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? Oh my word! This fire within us is, is partnering with the seven spirits of the Lord. And I just see this arcing happening all, from our toes, from our feet, all the way up our, our body, our being. I don't even know where to start now. I mean, we could have ended with that. It, um. Okay, so I was going to talk about um, the seven days of Genesis and how he broke down the restoration process within each of the days. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I was just going to use the scripture and go over maybe the first few days today, not really much in detail, you know, like going all through the days. Yeah. So if, if you guys have your word, we can go to Genesis chapter one, verse one, yeah. and go all the way to verse four. I think that's about as far as we'll go tonight. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll start reading or unless somebody else wants to read. No. Okay. All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered over the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, making the first day. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to break it down, like break it, break it down. Um, starting off with in the beginning, what the Lord showed me about in the beginning is that that's, that's not a reference to chronological time. That's a reference to the source, the place of origin where all things are established and created, the beginning of everything. 
And so it was real significant when, I mean, he highlighted, he highlighted the name Elohim to me in the beginning, Elohim. And what he started to show me was, of course, the name itself is plural in nature. Elohim is plural. But he showed me masculine and feminine attributes with that because Elohim is the one who creates. So it was interesting how he's, he amplified the whole masculine, the male, female, feminine concept with the name to me because that's almost like the, the, the precedent for how creation functions. So you need both in order to actually be, be, be able to create and produce something out of that. And there's more to the name Elohim, but that's just what he showed me for here. So when he, okay, let me, um, do I need to go back at all, Lord? Let me see. So he basically used that structure to, uh, I, Kim, I'm really struggling to teach right now. <laughs> I'm, I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, it's kind of rough right now. Yeah, okay. Um, hmm, all right. Father, help me out here because I'm, now I'm lost. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered over the deep waters. Now, what the Father showed me about darkness covering the deep waters, he showed me that as the actual human body, mm -hmm. the flesh body covering the deep mysteries of God. And when we all think of darkness, we know that it's connected to seeing or the lack thereof. He really emphasized that to me. He, he said, when, when you can't see, when you can't see, that actually... It's like not being able to see through the eyes of the father, through the eyes of God consciousness. So you're kind of wandering around through life with no form and no structure and no order to, to anything. It's like you're trying to figure out how to handle this situation and how to handle that situation over here. And so what begins to happen is then the father begins to hover. He begins to hover over you. So if you're in darkness, he hovers. And there's two different ways that he will hover in order to bring light and I gave one example the last time I taught and that was when I talked about being in school mm -hmm. and I noticed that I was real critical and judgmental of those students and it was really 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 loud he didn't speak anything yet he just allowed that hovering process to bring up some old patterns and negative ways of thinking and negative ways of doing things. And when I was able to acknowledge it, I said, wait a minute, there's, there's something off about this. I'm like being critical of these kids. And that's when the father said, okay, that's because you've taken it upon yourself to develop your own personal opinion about these students. And you never taken the time to ask me what I think. So try doing that. That's one way he'll actually expose whatever character issue or flaw or mentality that you have that needs to be dealt with and brought to the surface. Another way is he actually releases the promise over you. He speaks a word over you. So for an example, I spent the first 30 years of my life honestly being told that I was stupid, that I wasn't bright, that I wasn't smart, all of those different things, right? So then one particular day, um, in college, I'm 30 now, I'm in college, and the father just randomly told me to read Einstein's biography. And I said, okay, I, I'll read the biography. All right. Well, okay. And when I started to read it, I started recognizing similarities with how he processed his environment. The way he got the law of relativity was just through observation. He literally had a God conscious mind. And so I, when I realized that way of processing creation and environment, the similarities with that, I said, okay, Father, I see that there's a similarity there, but what's the point for, you know, using Einstein as a reference? And he said, because I called you to operate in the spirit of genius. And I started laughing because I said, genius is a spirit. Where is that in the scripture? Because I've never seen it. But that's an interesting way to describe, you know, what you're trying to tell me. And I said, okay, Father, so what's your definition of genius? And he said, my definition of genius is one who stands and sees from the future at all times and they have this capacity to pull what they see 
in the future into the present moment. And no matter what a person tries to do to catch up to a genius, they will only pick up pieces of the genius's past because the genius always exists in the future. They always dwell in that place. So the future is like a place. Uh, yeah. It's more than a timeline. It's, it's a dimension. Yeah. So, and I said, that's a real deep explanation of, of genius. So, okay. And I said, you know, God, I really appreciate you trying to tell me I'm smart and all that because I spent 30 years believing the opposite. And I said, but I would have appreciated it if you would have used someone just a little bit dumber to make your point because I'm not Einstein. And he said, not in the realm of math and science, you're not, but in the realm of the spirit, you are. Yeah. He says, so what I want you to do is I want you to study the law of relativity and I want you to understand the basic fundamental principle of the law. And if you're able to catch the spiritual parallel to that law, then you can no longer come back and tell me that you are not who I say you are. I was like, all right. Now, let me tell you, it took me 14 hours straight sitting in front of books and my computer to even get the basic concept. And y'all, it wasn't like deep, bougie, like scientific books. It was, I was looking at pbs.org. I was looking at highlights for kids, <laughs> physics for dummies. I was looking at cartoons. And it was really not helping me make me feel smarter because I just was not getting it. So fast forward 14 hours later, I was finally able to understand it. And as soon as I understood it, it was, the revelation was quick. It was like, oh, this is literally Genesis one through three in, in a quantum physics law. I'm, and I'm not gonna go into the law itself and what it really is, but what that did was it planted the seed of the father's truth in me. Yeah. And it literally set the precedent for what would happen next. And that's how that let there be light process works. He steps in and says, this is the truth of who you are. And you're looking at your environment like, what? Okay, I was told I was stupid my whole life. And then you come around telling me the exact opposite of that. The whole point for the word being released is to plant the seed for you to go into that, that journey of actually knowing that that's exactly who you are. Yeah. Does, I hope that makes sense. That's I hope that makes sense. Beautiful. Okay, so when he explained to me like what let there be light is, he, he basically said to me, he said, let there be light is let me bring exposure to the things that are out of order so I can put it in order. So whatever's out of order within you, whatever lies you were told, whatever, whatever things that you believe, whatever doctrine, all that stuff, he, he pretty much blows that up with this particular encounter. It's exposing the lie with truth, with the truth. And there has to be a willingness to see it for what it is. Let there be light. Okay. And then there is light. That's why he called it good. It's because the truth of who you are is now starting the process of being able to function the way that it was destined to function. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so... Because the whole point is about actually seeing with clarity. And one thing that the father is, he started showing me recently, he started showing me the, I don't want to say the contrast between life and death, but he's showing me the connection between the two. And that the way that we see death or darkness, it's really about lack of clear vision. When someone dies, it's because they can't see, they don't live. It's like, there's no consciousness there. And he said, Death is about not seeing with clarity. When you come to a point where you're stepping into the law of the spirit of life, that is full clarity, full clear vision, full perspective, God consciousness. Everything is existing in that space. So if you're living in that space, darkness can't exist. Death doesn't exist. It's like life literally swallows up death. So you can literally live in this mortal body in God consciousness and still physically be in the body. That's the whole point for the continual process of letting there be light. And a lot of people have a hard time when stuff starts to get shaken in their life because they look at it as a negative, yeah. but it's not. Like the things that I've gone through in my life, a, a lot of crazy stuff that I've been through, I'm now looking at my past from the perspective of it really, it was, they were uncomfortable and they were very unhappy experiences, but they literally brought life to me. I can't be mad because I grew up for 30 years being told I was stupid. I can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at whatever abuse that I experienced or whatever trauma happened over here and over here and over here. Cause I'm can literally see 
how it molded and shaped me into who I became now. Even though it was hard, it was all designed to teach and train and perfect me. I don't see it from a negative standpoint anymore. I don't see my history from a negative place anymore. Because I'm telling you, it was, it was, it was, it was real bad because I was literally afraid to talk for so many years because child, I was afraid stupid would come out. So I would literally sit down and just be quiet and not say anything. Just, I'm not gonna say nothing, not gonna do nothing, not gonna. Mm -mm. And a lot of people would misunderstand that. Yeah. They would assume, oh, she's just some stuck up light skinned chick who she, she thinks she's better than everybody else. And it's like, no, I really don't. I really don't. I just, I, I don't. But the more the father shed the light on the truth of who I was through incremental steps, because it wasn't just one thing overnight. It was, he gave me that revelation and it, it, it put me in a position to change how I, I was willing to hear the truth. Because when I got that revelation about the law of relativity, it was like, oh, well, maybe maybe there is something to what the father is saying. It was something tangible that he gave me, which is what he will do with everybody and what he'll do with all of us. He'll give you that revelation and he'll lead you in a path that you will actually see results. Yes. I hope this is making sense. Yes. So it's like a gradual progression moving out of darkness because there's compartments within this that are operating in that fashion. So you might have, you know, fear of, you might have anxiety issues when you go out in public and that's rooted in something else. You might have abandonment issues over here or you might have been maybe molested as a child. So that affects all of your relationships with either men or women or people in authority. So he may not be able to deal with every single one of those issues all at once. He couldn't have dealt with that whole you know, concept of not being smart enough all in one setting. So he gradually gives you more and more truth over time in a level of progression. So you can, it's like an expansion. It's like the king, what God's kingdom government, there's no end. It, yeah. it works for your restoration process too. So he would lead me into situations that were obstacles. Even, you know, we're still talking about the whole, the, the stupid reference, right? And I'm sounding like real, like heavy, harsh when I say that, but because it's so disconnected from me now, I can talk about it now. Yeah. And that's how you know, that's how you know you're free, where you can <laughs> talk about it and you're just like, I'm good. Like, it's, that's not who I am now. But it was a part of the process that I had to go through to really come to a place where it's like, I know the father and I know who he says I am and I'm okay with that. But the way that it looked was he allowed me to come up against obstacles where it looked like I wasn't smart enough to accomplish that. And that's where the meditating from the presence is so significant because it's like, okay, father, I really don't know what I'm doing. I need you to hold my hand or how do I fix this situation or handle this situation? And he would give me piece by piece by piece with his revelation attached, not just practical knowledge, but spiritual knowledge too. Yeah. This is how you have to handle this. This is how you handle this. And it was literally step by step by step. And, and a lot of people get stuck in those, the difficult process because they can't identify the face of God or the presence of God in the obstacle. I hope this is making yeah. sense. I feel like I'm rambling y'all, but. Oh, no, it's so good. So. It's, it's not even really about the opposition. It's always about the journey in intimacy because every time he spoke something over me, every time he released some type of kind and compassionate word, it led me more into him and trusting him more to continue to go through things. Because it, it got to the point with me where I told the father, I was like, I don't have nobody else but you. I have nothing else. So you're really just going to have to walk with me every step of the way, just every step of the way. Like, Lord, please help me out here. <laughs> and, it, and it really, the opposition and all of these overshadowing moments and the let there be light moments really does lead you and, to, and bring you into a place of absolute total trust and rest. You can't take this journey without the opposition. It has to be there because there's no other way you'll really be able to see to see clearly, to see him, to know that that's really that who he, he is, who he says he is. Yeah. And for you to know who you are too, because it still ties into you not remembering. It's not that you don't know, you just don't remember. Yeah. And even in, I realized that even in my childhood that I was always Tavita, 
the problem was of the immaturity. I lived in such immaturity that all of those opposition, those difficult places and times were designed to actually grow me up. That's why I don't look at the let there be light moments and the exposure of messed upness or corruption really, it, it doesn't really affect me as much now. I'm not grieving over the past now because it's like, well, I needed all of that to really become who I am. Yeah. I hope that, yeah, I hope that makes so much sense because it feels like I'm just rambling. That, that had me messed up, Kim, <laughs> earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I did bring up about how the father said that this portion was good, that when he said, let there be light and light was, it was good because it's actually, the light is actually functioning according to what he said it would be. That that's what good is. Tope is good. And so I guess we could talk about day two. We can talk about day two a little bit. So when we look at verse six, it says, then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters from heaven from the waters of heaven, from the waters of the earth. And that's what happened. God made this space separate from the waters of the earth, from the waters of the heavens. And God called that space sky. There is evening and morning, second day. It's interesting because that this day is not even considered to be good. Out of all of the days in Genesis, this is the one day that's not good. And that's tied into the whole division and separation. And what the father actually showed me about this now is that this separation process is connected to the let there be light moment. And I mean, we do know that, but it's, it's like you going through the process of being separated from that old way of living. And it's a gradual removal. Cause a lot of us like want to pray and ask the Lord, well, Lord, if I pay my tithes, um, can you please help me get out of this situation right here? Lord, can I'll do this. It's like, we try to barter God. Like we try to bargain with him. Like if I do this, will you do this? Lord, please, I don't want to suffer. Please, I don't want to go through this. And you have to, it, it, honestly, suffering is literally a part, of the, a part of the process because Yeshua learned obedience through suffering. Yeah. And obedience wasn't really an issue for Yeshua. If you really, oh, hold on, y'all. Let me fix this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Obedience wasn't Yeshua's issue. Yeah. It was... He had to, he never suffered before. He never suffered. So he literally had to endure through suffering. And that's how he became who he became. And that applies to us. Yeah. It's going through all of these experiences and processes that we go through, even the ones that we think don't seem to really fit with anything. So like I was telling Albertina not too long ago, how, you know, what I was just going through recently was, Y'all, I, I go through a lot. I have a lot of lessons, trust me. Uh, the last thing I experienced was, you know, I debit card got stolen, bank account got drained. Uh, God, it was so many different things at once. I said my car got taken and I literally got an eviction notice all in the same week. And I'm looking at the Lord like, what kind of lesson am I supposed to get in this? I don't know what's going on, Lord. Like, I'm trying to do everything you tell me to do. And I'm going through things like this. Father, I would really, really, really like to not go through at least once. Just once. Just a little bit. And then, but I'm still choosing to engage him and trust him. Okay, well, Father, what aspect of me that I need to deal with that I'm not dealing with? What, what part of the situation am I not seeing? What area do I need to focus on other than just you? Because I noticed that when it comes to specific situations, I will be avoiding. I'll choose the face of God over actually dealing with the issue. So I think it kind of tied into that. But the thing specifically that he wanted me to do is one, one simple thing, which was put my resume on Indeed, just on a website, just real simple instruction. That's God's word, but it was simple. Within 24 hours, I got a job offer for Afghanistan. And as soon as I saw that, it was like, think, oh, that's it. Because I know that I'm called to do things beyond America. So yeah. when I saw that, I said, this is, this is, this is the presence of God. This is God right here. But it was something real simple that he shined a light on. As simple as put your resume in. You don't have to do nothing else. Put your resume in. 
And it's, it literally works like that. So I went from no car, eviction notice, bank account being drained, getting denied for certain benefits that for military benefits for me that I deserved and I got denied for that. And all of a sudden the father's like, look here, this job right here, you're going to be doing X, Y, and Z in the kingdom for me, but, but you'll be making six figures while you're doing this. And I'm like, wait a minute. I went from $18,000 a year to six figures, but I just went through all of this craziness just to get to this point. And all I had to do was continue to stand in the light, stand in his, look at his face, allow that separation process to happen and allow the stripping and the breaking. And I really don't think that God de deals with everybody the same way he deals with me so heavily. You know what I mean? But I'm telling you, it feels like when he strips and he breaks and he separates you from the old ways of living, it's like a slingshot. And it's, you get to, you may get to a point where you say, I got, I can't take no more. I can't take no more. This craziness. Like, can, can we please stop this? Can we please stop? Can we please stop? But you're still looking at him while you're saying, God, can you please stop? And you know, he ain't going to stop because it's all about the lesson. You know that you need to see something that you know you need to see, but you don't want to see it the way that he's trying to get you to see it. Right. You know, <laughs> you know. But it's like, I got to use that. I got to pull you back on that slingshot. I got to pull you back. I got to pull you back. I got to pull you back. And part of it was because none of those things should matter to me. Even if I were to become homeless, okay. Even though God wasn't trying to do that, it was, God, I choose your face even over wanting to be comfortable. Wanting things to go a certain way. Like really surrendering to what my desires are. And that's a part of the day one and day two process too, because you might be required to let go of desires. You might be required to let go of the fact that you want this 1975, you know, Corvette. I don't even know if they had 75 Corvettes back then, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like letting that go and just, okay, there's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is, I might be codependent to finances or the truth of the matter is I might be codependent to wanting to control things. I might be wanting to feel safe because I really don't feel safe. And the truth of the matter is, God, I might not even trust you. And a lot of those are the truths that come out in the chaos. I don't trust you, God. I'm angry with you, God. I don't like this particular thing or I want this to go a certain way. And so when he starts to strip those things and you begin to react and you panic and you <gasps> no God, that's a red flag right there. And that's actually what he's trying to deal with. When you start to emotionally react to the stripping and the breaking, it is so much deeper than just the breaking itself. There's something that is way, way back that he's trying to show you. Like, so if you, you know, let's say somebody has an issue with developing relationships with men. So every time a man comes close, no. And they may not just flat out say no, but they may just kind of move away, skirt back, push back. And then one particular guy the father uses that really, really may agitate you. And it causes you to react in some special, like, I don't like what he said. And he did this and he did this and he did that. That's the exposure. So it's like, okay, father, I reacted to this man real irrationally or this particular type of way. Why did I do that? Is it, well, because you still are operating in fear because of whatever happened to you when you were a child. You're still thinking or your body is still reacting as if you were, you're going to be hurt again, as if you're going to be assaulted again. I need to heal that. You see how that process works? It's like you go yeah. through something and then you react to it. And then it's like, I reacted to that. Why did I react? Then he shines a light and says, that's what's going on with you. I want to heal that part of you that is still thinking that it's broken when you're not broken. Let me love that out of you. Let me heal that out of you. Let me embrace you. Let me, let me show you how you are supposed to be treated. You are my Rachel in this life. I'm, I'm your Jacob. You're my Rachel. You are my beautiful one, my favorite one, my chosen one. That is speaking the complete, complete opposite of what you may have experienced and not thinking that that's what that was used for. There are people in all of our lives that the Lord is using to sharpen us. And they tend to <laughs> agitate us. 
The people that agitate you the most are usually the ones that the father is using the most. Those are your let there be light people. The yeah. people who aggravate you the most are your let there be light people. So you lean into those situations like, okay, I'm going to let you get on my nerves, but I'm going to go back and ask the Lord why you get on my nerves. Really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I literally do that with people. It's like, if this person agitates me or if this situation agitates me, I can tell that there's a lesson. There's some level of wholeness or restoration that I need to step into. So I'll lean into that connection or whatever it is to see. And then once I get what I need, then the father removes me. He authentically will remove me from that situation once the lesson is learned. Um, I hope that makes, I, I, are we, are we, no, it's only 818. I can still keep going, can I? <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions so far? Anything they want me to bring up? No, but I, I love, I love what you were saying about the, the, you know, when, when the Lord, when something is, is irritating you and how the Lord uses that. I know on Sunday, Susan brought up a thing that was saying that uh, she said that, you know, the Lord has shown her within herself, she sees it as pockets and, and whatever's in that well, Lord, what pocket are we going to deal with? And when she, as she was talking about it on Sunday, all of suddenly I realized how amazing that because we're created according to father's image, we're actually mm -hmm. created and below all that is love. Mm -hmm. The very fabric of who we are is love. And whenever we, we do that, whether we, it looks like the way you're describing it, or it looks like in Susan's language pockets, love actually feasts on whatever's in that pocket. That is the fuel yeah. for love to come to its full maturity. That thing, whatever it is, how beautiful that the Lord created us like that, that that actually becomes the fuel that grows love up in that area to its full maturity. Absolutely. And I'm just being reminded of that as you're talking about this very thing, Tavita, that is so, so good. That's really where my entire relationship has been. And, you know, I, I've had people like comment. Like you have this dialogue with God, you have this interaction with God that's unique. And it's like, well, cause that was all I had. And he was adamant about staying in my life. Cause I'm telling you, I used to try to make God go away. Like, I don't want to hear you. I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want to be bothered with Christianity. I just, I don't. And he was adamant about being Jacob to me and me being his Rachel. So it was like, I don't want to say I have permission, but I, it's like I have permission to be who I was as jacked up as it was while he was walking with me through all of it. Cause I mean, y'all, I used to cuss God out. Like I would rather die and go to hell than do what you tell me to do. I mean, it was really, it was bad. And he never moved from that position. He never moved no matter what I said and what I did. He was not he would not yield. There were encounters that I had where I would go like to like some church conference and God would physically show up in human form on somebody. And the person wasn't even conscious at the time when the spirit of God rested upon them. It was like they became God in that moment. And this Miss Green, I love her because she literally looked at me. He, Abba, looked at me and said, you think you can make me run from you? Daughter, you're not strong enough to do that. You will break before I do. Trust me that on that. That is so beautiful. I, I'm <laughs> all up in your face and I am going nowhere. I love you. I'm not moving. And we're going to ride this out together. That was literally what he said. And then she, he left and then she falls out on the floor. Talking about what happened? Did I get sick? Did I pass out? And everybody was looking at her like God showed up. <laughs> oh, okay. And she just went on with her life. God literally... Like he loved me enough to show up in human form because I used to say crazy enough st stuff like, God, if you ever came down in human form off your throne, I would fight you and I would do this and this and that because I'm mad at how my life turned out. And then he showed up and called my bluff. He called my bluff. That was a let there be light moment for real. But the fact that he was even willing to do that, yes. he was willing to come down off his throne and just say, you, I'm not going nowhere. He loved me enough to say I'm not moving. I've never had anybody do that. 
And it was through the opposition. It was through those dark, chaotic moments of not being able to see where he would manifest himself. Let there be light. Here I am. This is where I am. And I'm willing to go through this separation process with you. It is That is the crux of all of our journeys. It is in the struggle. And that's what we don't I'm not, well, I'm going to say me. I didn't want to go through it. I didn't want to go through the struggle and the suffering and all that stuff. I mean, because God used to say consistently, if you're willing and obedient, you will inherit the land. And I was like, I, I'm okay. I, I don't want to, but you're not leaving. So I'm just going to go ahead and do what you want me to do. But it was, it was always that gradual progression of lesson after lesson after lesson. And sometimes I was hard-headed and had to learn the same lesson over and over and over and over. I don't recommend that, but you'll learn the lesson. So if he says, I want you to learn how to love the people that you're around, how would that look in the natural? Okay. So what will happen, what could happen is the Lord will allow people to come into your life that are either extremely broken, extremely angry, extremely frustrated, and maybe negative. And you will literally have to bury yourself in the face of God to deal with people like that. Like, Father, I need your help. Because while they're coming at you in all of their anger and their mess and whatever games that they're playing, the Lord is showing you what facets of you that might be identical to that. Because he's going to bring people in your life that resonate with whatever issue within you that you probably haven't dealt with yet. So if you may have some issues with pessimism or negativity, or you might complain, he may draw other people in your life that are the same way. Or he may draw other people that are the opposite of you. And then those people will aggravate you. Because if you're normally pessimistic and you deal with someone that says, I love today. Today is just beautiful and it's wonderful. And I love God and I love this. And you, you just want to punch him in the face. Because it's like, I don't feel that way. And so that will bring you into this space where it's like, okay, God, this person gets on my nerves and I shouldn't be mad at them, but I am. What's really going on? That's because you don't know my love daughter. You don't know my love son. So embrace the love that I have for you. Let me love you. Spend time with me. Spend time in my word. Let's play chess together. Let's dance in the stars together. That may be uncomfortable for someone who doesn't know love, who doesn't understand it, who doesn't understand intimacy. But it's when he gives you that one piece of let there be light, that one piece of revelation, come dance with me. That's let there be light. And you just have to be willing to come out of what you know, come out of what you're used to and just embrace that. And it might be for five or 10 seconds. But you embrace that. So then once you embrace that, then he'll say, he'll ask you to do something else. Hey, how about when, you know, you're at a stoplight, just thank me. Or just tell me you love me or sing a song or have some gratitude. And I'm not saying that to be like mean and sarcastic, but, you know, he might give you it, itty bitty incremental steps for you to step into a place of wholeness. When you're at a stoplight, do this. Or right before you walk into the door at your job, just pray that my rest covers you. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do that. And you'll be able to see the face of God more and more and more and more as you engage every let there be light moment. Because as those let there be lights moment happen, you're in automatically in the day two process of being separated from the old way of thinking, the old way of feeling, the old way of existing. And I'm telling you, I'm in a place right now where if, if I am... If I'm angry or negative or pessimistic, it is foreign now, yeah. which is, y'all, that was not me before then. When I feel it, I'm like, something, I don't like this feeling of being like angry or sad or depressed. Like, I don't like, I don't even like, I don't want to be there. But if I get in that space, I'm able to turn to the father and say, is there something that I need to see that I'm not seeing? And that's a part of the journey, too, because you'll start to recognize that there's a there's a pattern of engaging certain things in certain situations. Not everything will need a prayer, so to speak. It's like, OK, God, what's what's going on? Yeah. And he may say. Mm, nothing. You just need to shake it off. Or he may say, I need you to do this. But the whole point is, with every step you turn towards him, every step you turn. What is that scripture that says? If you not acknowledge me in all of your ways and I will direct your path, that is that is so true. 
Somebody asked the question. What's your oh, understanding? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I lost it. Okay, what is your understanding of the separation of waters above and beneath? It really stood out when you read it. I would like to hear your understanding of those waters. <sighs> oh, that's good, Albertina. God explained, he compared it to DNA. He said the waters were DNA. So the waters of the world is the earthly DNA structure and the waters above is the kingdom heavenly DNA structure. And it's like, it's, it's he's trying to get you out of the worldly mentality, the worldly structure. It's, it, it's connected to Leviathan because what the fathers showed me years ago is Leviathan was um, the water demon. It's connected to, the, it's the twisted serpent that lives in the sea. So he's literally trying to disengage and separate you from the iniquity that's literally in the bloodline, that's literally in your DNA. So when he speaks his word, when he overshadows you with his truth, that's his DNA that's shining the light on the waters below. I hope does this make sense. I hope this makes sense, Albertina. He's shining a light on that and he's untwisting the record that's in the DNA. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Really good. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so it's that gradual unraveling of um, the old record. It's the old way of thinking that that space of death. And I'm going to throw this out here because the Lord showed me this this week. He said the reason why people die physically is because there are compartments within them that are still not awake. There's compartments within their soul that are still darkened. He said, that's why death is actually able to take a physical hold of them and take them out. He said, but when you allow me to let there be light in every compartment and every facet of your being, death can't exist for you because nothing but light dwells there. That's why the journey into let there be light and the separation process is so important. That's why the struggle and the suffering is so important because it's all designed to untwist the record. Untwisting something, if you had a bottle cap and you're trying to open that joke, it's like, yeah. I don't know about y'all fellas, but we struggle with that. Untwisting stuff. You're trying to untwist something that's locked in its seal and it's supposed to not move. It's supposed to not go anywhere. Yeah, it's going to be hard to open that up. But once you open it up, then there's that air, that freedom that, you know, you know what I'm saying? And that's what he's doing to the DNA. And it's leaning into whatever opposition that the father allows. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't know if he does anybody else like this, but there was at least a decade or two where he would literally let me know ahead of time when something was coming. He would say, a shaking is coming or um, a pressure cooker season. He used to call them pressure cooker seasons. Anybody who knows anything about pressure cookers with chicken, you can't open those jokers before their time. Yeah. Because you'll literally blow up your entire kitchen, the entire room, all that stuff. So he would literally put me in multiple pressure cooker seasons. And it was like my body was literally on fire with these seasons that he would put me in. Just, uh, I want to get out of this and I would never be allowed to get out of it. And it would be real simple stuff. Like he would say things like, and an unexpected hit is coming. And I'm like, unexpected hit? Okay. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to guard, you know, guard my chin. Like if he's getting ready to chin check me or something like, okay, let me protect some part of my body. And then he'll hit something else and then go back to the original place that he was going to hit. So I was on my way to the gym one day and he, I literally got T-boned 24 hours later. After he said an unexpected hit is coming, got T-boned 24 hours later. And I couldn't like pray that away. I yeah. couldn't pray that situation away. Cause he's like, I'm just letting you know it's coming. And that one experience was tied into so many other different experiences in order to continue to engage the face of God and trust him. And it looked like, it seemed like a nonsensical journey. Like, you're telling me I'm about to get hit by a car. Appreciate it. And then after that, I got a rental car and the rental car got taken out of the parking lot the next day. And then after that, the rental car got wrecked. Those are the type of things I would go through, like back to back to back to back. And then I had to come out of pocket $800 to get it fixed. And I'm like, God, what is the purpose for all of these experiences? Number one. The relationship with God that I experienced through all of those crazy situations nobody can take God from me yeah. 
nobody can change my mind about who the father is with everything that I've been through. Like, I know, I know who the father is. And it took all of that for me to get it. It really took all of that. And I learned so many different things that I didn't even realize I was learning. I learned humility. I learned how to continue to engage the face of God. I learned obedience. I learned how to engage peace. I learned how to see things the way the father sees it. I've learned how to communicate more. It's so many different things that you can't put a price tag on it. Yeah. You can't put a price tag with the things that you learn through the suffering. I hope that makes it, you ha- it's yeah. like you have to endure. Endurance is a requirement in this journey with the father. It, it really is a requirement, but it also requires for you to be able to see or learn to see the way the father sees, because that's really what this is all about. This all boils down to getting to the point where you can see all things clearly. You see the way the father sees, you hear the way the father hears. I do what I see my father doing. And I asked the father today, I said, I I really would like to get to a point where there's no more questions for me. Where I'm trying to figure out, father, should I go left? Should I go right? Should I do this? What do I, I said, God, I'm so tired of doing that. I feel like it takes too much of my time. Yeah. Like asking, where do I go? What do I do? And how do I do this? And it's like, I just want to go. I want to move like Yeshua did. He just went, you know what I mean? And if he didn't need to go, he would wait a couple of days and go whenever he needed to go. But he literally was in the breath of, he was in the wind of God. Yeah. He was literally, and you know, and the father told me this, this week, he said, I need you to live your life like Forrest Gump. He said, even though, oh, there's a whole lot of, connections with that people told him that he was stupid Uh but I don't even see him as somebody who is stupid I saw a purity of love within him real simplistic real simplistic life and what was so amazing about his journey was that he just did his thing and opportunities came to him favor came to him and he just would just go and do what he did like I'm just gonna go run and he's changing people's lives as he's living his life as he's taking these opportunities. And it almost looked like God's favor was literally on him while he's taking these journeys. Cause when he did his little shrimp and boat business, every other shrimp and boat business was destroyed. Cause all he had to do was go sing in a church choir and pray. And he became like abundantly successful after that. It, it was, yeah. that's what the father was saying. He said, don't complicate this. Just get to a point where you're just moving as I move, breathe as I breathe and walk as I walk and engage me and I will make sure the resources and the opportunities come to you. You will be required to do work when the opportunities come to you, but I will bring them to you. But I want you to live your life with simplicity, with love, with with rest, with joy, not complicated, not trying to figure anything out, not trying to be deep. And I just, that's the place of rest that I wanna enter into now. Just less questions, less questions just existing, just being. So this, what we did earlier, earlier, it had more weight for me just because of the conversations that I had with the father earlier. It, it, it had a lot of weight, especially with the, the whirlwind. And it honestly looked like he was putting on us a new body, a divine, that's what I saw in the spirit, a divine body. He was putting that on us. And that's what will give us the ability to transcend into multiple dimensions and be in several dimensions at one time. Yeah. But it requires the leaning into the suffering when he leads us into it. So we can see his face. We can see life. We can see creation as he sees it. That's where the law of the spirit of life, that's what it is. The law of the spirit of life is about seeing clearly. If you can see with God's perspective, if you can see all things through him, there is no death. So it won't even apply to you. Death is about lack of clarity, lack of perception, not being able to understand, not knowing. And we're coming into a place as a body where we will come into the full knowing of who he is, the full knowing. Death doesn't exist in that space. Yeah. And I really do believe that this generation that's coming up now will be a generation that doesn't taste death. I really believe that, especially with the revelation he's releasing now. So I'm just saying I'm part of that. I know that's right. Me too. <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, and Angela had a question. What does leaning into the suffering look like for you? For me, um, 
I have to give an example. I got to give a real example. Hmm. If I, let's say I'm dealing with someone at work and I don't like the way that they may treat me or treat other people or treat situations, I may, I'm not going to just quit my job just because I'm uncomfortable with what they're saying and what they're doing, unless the father leads me to do that. But in a lot of cases, mm -mm. he'll say, he'll have me observe and recognize what's going on in the situation. And I'll say, okay, father, he'll lead me to maybe communicate with that person. And I, I done been in some situations at my job where I called that person out for something that I heard they, them say about another coworker. And this was a subordinate of theirs. And I say, you said that so-and-so was blah, 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 blah. And I heard you say it. And that's not right. And of course they lied about it. And I, I literally had to maintain integrity and character consistently and treat everybody kind consistently while either I'm being talked about behind my back or while I'm being gossiped about and still not a, not playing into the whole gossip mess, if that makes sense. I had to learn how to do all of that. That's what leaning in is. It's like I'm uncomfortable, but I'm still engaging in a situation and asking God how to deal with each person in situation while I'm engaging it until the season is done. And God will make sure that the season is done. I don't have to work hard to make the season end. But it's like, okay, how do I look at this? How do I engage this person? What should I say? What shouldn't I say? What do I need to see about myself? Why am I reacting? Why do I hate this person? Because I mean, I, I didn't have to admit that to the father. I don't like this person. I can't stand this individual because the way they do this, 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 and this. I just think they're terrible. So then the father has to bring correction to me about my attitude about them and then show me truths that are going on within them that nobody knows about. And then I have to, it's like, okay, I have compassion for them. Now I understand why they're even behaving the way that they are. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I have to take myself out of the equation emotionally and learn how to see them through the father's eyes and not through my own personal I, judgments and criticisms and all that stuff. Not, not every situation is the same because I, I would not advocate if somebody's in a domestic violence situation, oh, you need to lean into that suffering. No, that's, that's one of those, no, that's one of those you, you need to just leave and learn how to, you know, get out of that. But simplistic stuff like gossiping and, you know, your marriage and it's, it's unique, but it's all about engaging the father and asking him, how does he see you in a situation and how he sees them? Right. Did I explain that or do I need to, is that okay? Good. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Tavita. Okay. Um, you want to open it up for questions or call people to ask questions yeah, more? Can, okay, go ahead, dad. I see you're, did you have something you want to add? Yeah. I, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate it, uh, what you were sharing, uh, letting there be light and uh, it, it, uh, the fact of chaos in the midst of the chaos of the universe father said let there be light and so, but that's that's with us, that is staying with us it's the same principle as, as we're in the midst of chaos from time to time the father reveal the light of that situation and bring light to that situation mm -hmm. and that brings us to that's what brought the the whole creation into order so that's what brings us into order as we allow him to let there be light and so mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate you sharing that uh, Tavita that's very good thank you okay. you know just wanted to say that it, it's interesting and if, if I step on anybody if you're in the middle of saying something please forgive me my on my end it's lagging a bit so I really am I'm not meaning to do that if I if I am or if I do um but interesting you say that dad about the the uh, chaos, you bring that up because it reminds me of the conversation that we were having that sister brought up about peace. And mm -hmm. I think it was Angie Bokelman. I don't know if she's on tonight or not, but she was talking about how, oh, I've got to read it because it was just astounding and I loved it. Um, uh, hold on, where? let me see if I can find it. But uh, she 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 mentioned about um, oh gosh where is it 
I can't find it now, but about um, oh, I can't find it. Anyway, it was it was she was saying about how um, how um, I found it, sister. If you want me to, did you, read okay, it. would you read it, sister? <laughs> Yeah, is it this part? Um, she said, I agree. Um, talking about peace. And she says, peace has to be strong enough to overcome the waves. Yep. Shalom means to shut down engines of chaos. Yep. To come and take over. Mm -hmm. Not to take sides, but take over. Peace must be a beast. Yes. And when you said that about, you know, we were talking about light. Uh, I'm I'm curious if they have the same either core or root um, as as shalom and and mm -hmm. because it's it governs over chaos, which mm -hmm. I find really interesting. Light governs over chaos. Shalom governs over chaos, and so I'm curious mm -hmm. if they come from the same root. You know, as as far as the dynamics of what light is, who we are, who we hmm. are, really. Anyway, that's just what came to me when dad was bringing that up right now. Anybody would have something else you want to add or ask or... Incredible, Tavita. And, you know, I know that this word is so timely, not only with what's happening in the U.S., but around the world, not only the word that Tavita was releasing tonight, but everything Father had us doing um, when we first uh, gather together, truly bringing us to that place that that we we know without a shadow of a doubt of who we are and and how in that place of confidence. So anyway, okay, Jamie, I see your video is on. Go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. There you are. Hey, Kim. Uh, to me, it's so good. So, so wonderful. And, and what came up in me, um, you know, and, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but um, I always would tell people, you can argue doctrine all day long, but you can't argue with the experience. I can't even argue myself out of my own experiences. And that's, you know, what I was getting from you. But what it reminded me of was Joseph, when he got to the place after going through the journeys of that intimacy and learning to be obedient by the things that he suffered in Genesis chapter, um, I think it's 30 or 41, when he has his first son, Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil, mm -hmm. all my father's house. So when you talk about that separating, you see the experience of that with Joseph, uh, the, the separating of the waters, because he basically was coming out of that earthly lineage, if you will, or the, the iniquitous patterns and coming into what God designed him to be. Mm -hmm. And then the second son, it says, uh, Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And this is right in context. If you go down a few verses, it says, so all countries came to Joseph. <laughs> mm, so I love that. Because of the governmental mantle upon the lives, on our lives, we don't fully grasp. You know, I like what you said. If I, if I, if I, every second of my life, if I lived in the future, in the place where the high priest used to go into that place in eternity where they saw the end from the beginning. If I lived there every day, I would have a whole different perspective. Mm -hmm. Joseph, when the journey began and he had the dreams of his brothers bowing down, he didn't see this part. He didn't fully mm -hmm. understand what it meant and he had to go through something. And then the other thing real quick is Yeshua in John chapter eight, he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He, they shall have the revelation of how to live my kind of life. Mm -hmm. And everything you're explaining is so powerful. This is good, but it, it just reminded me of Joseph's journey, just to, to put an experience or an example to it. But thank you so much, Tavita, for sharing. 
Oh, that's so good. Jean. What's what I really love about just the place that I'm at right now is the fact that I'm looking at my history completely different. Even though my history has not changed, my perception of it has completely changed. It's yeah. it's like I I get it. Like I really get it. I understand why that happened this way and it's like it's there's this automatic element of peace and forgiveness tied into the past. Yeah. There is shalom there. It's like there were, I I wasn't even broken then. That's really how I look at it now. I really wasn't broken. I literally just had to go through all these different experiences to fully become who I'm supposed to be. It wasn't about me being wrong or being jacked up or dirty or messed up. It was really I need to become. And that's what every obstacle, every trial, every experience was designed to do. It is not designed to destroy you overall. It's designed to destroy the old structure, but it's designed to help you become. It just hurts in the process. And, you know, there's this one statement that Lucy, that movie Lucy, Scar Scarlett Johansson said when she put those knives in that man's knee and she said pain is a, she said, um, yeah, pain is a, um, growth is an uncomfortable process. <laughs> and he said, all you know now is pain. You don't know anything else. This is stopping you from learning the suffering. All you know is this. Yeah. And I said, that is so true. When we get when we get caught up in the suffering and the pain, we forget what the father said. We forget who we are. We forget everything. Because it's like, God, I just want to get out of this. I really just don't want to suffer, Lord. And it, yeah, and that's why, that's why I go back to that moment when he took me back to when Yeshua was getting the lashes on his body. And he was so adamant about being like his face, Yeshua's face was determined to stare. He was determined to not keep his eyes off me. I'm doing this and looking at you and I'm not moving. I'm not turning away. I love you that much to endure this. This is me and you. And so because I had that encounter with Yeshua, I use that as a platform when I actually am going through something. I really do because it's like Yeshua was a beast to be able to do that because what I saw like I was saying last week, what I saw in that vision does not compare to what the Passion of the Christ show. That was light work. He, he, I saw bone. I saw femur bones. I saw the bones in his, I saw it. It was so much. Yeah. And I'm like, you were still willing to endure that and engage me face to face the whole time and not move. Like, wow, who can do that? But I want to do that with you. And so I just, yeah, yeah. That's my whole life is not the same. I don't even see it the same. Yeah. That's incredible, Tavita. Um, Cynthia, I saw your hand up. Do you have something you want to add or ask or say? Or... Yeah, I wanted to ask Tavita. I mean, earlier on, you were saying that the, I'm not sure if I heard you right, but correct me if I'm wrong. Were you saying that the darkness was our flesh covering the mysteries of God. And if that's yeah. what you said, then could you explain mm -hmm. it? Because I didn't I don't quite get that. Let me see. Let me look back at it. It said, um, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered over the deep waters. So when I look, I look at the earth in comparison to our physical body. And the waters within us is our blood, our record, our DNA. But that's who the Father is. It's like the record of God is still dwelling within us. But it's covered by that lack of awareness. It's covered by that curse or that flesh covering. And so when the Father hovers over us and he speaks, let there be light, he's speaking to the DNA. He's speaking to the water. He's speaking to the record that is that was always within us. Th does that make sense? The darkness is the flesh covering. That's what keeps us bound in this messed up structure, if that makes sense. Does, does that make sense? Or no? No? It does. It do How about for you, Cynthia? Oh, yes, it does. Oh, she said, okay. And, and you know, it, what's fascinating to me is, as you were describing that, that makes perfect sense. For how long have we been talking about our unconscious and subconscious mind mm -hmm. the memory of our body not being aware of reality of what our spirit man is doing what our body actually knows because of yeshua 
but we mm -hmm. just have not remembered it in our conscious awareness to respond in agreement what with truth mm -hmm. and and that is basically what you're saying is that mm -hmm. is the that is our body that holds the all of those records but has become unaware in our mm -hmm. unconscious and, su and subconscious mind that is r amazing just so good so good okay who else anybody else have something you want to ask or add or can i ask please kimberly yeah go ahead ruth yes yeah, yeah like can you backing onto that question i guess i'm just wondering if um you wouldn't mind repeating tavita about um your uh, the angle father gave you about the uh little i think spirit and that connection of you know the dna of the earthly uh paradigm is it or the earthly uh angle to as opposed to us being heavenly in yeshua um as our true life i didn't understand the question i'm sorry i'm so sorry oh, yeah. could you could you expand maybe on oh thank you thank you uh, yeah i really valued what you were saying um about the leviathan spirit of the world was it you were talking about that like the dna of the world mm -hmm. and so could you expand on that and i just feel that that's so, sort of follows on from that previous question i was just wondering if you can enlighten us more of that thank you um oh god how can i explain this it's the leviathan in scripture was this, the, described as the crooked serpent that lives in the sea that is the um it's like the snake demon it's something about that twisting that leviathan yes. does that mimics what's in the record it's because yes. if you look at the dna the dna is twisted and i remember when god had me looking at the dna years ago i was like something's wrong with the dna it, it looked like it's not supposed to be twisted it, yes. it doesn't look like it should be that way even though it is uh -huh. like it doesn't look yes. right and he said yes. that is that spirit that has come in when they ate the fruit off of the tree of knowledge, it twisted the record of God within them. And that oh. twisting prevents clear perception. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? It, it prevents it. Cause there's no straight, there's no straight line communication. It's a twisted communication. So everything yeah. that you see comes from that twisted place. It comes from that twisted record. And that's why day one and day two is so significant because it's, he's gradually speaking life over that twisted record and gradually mm -hmm. leading you out of that and yeah. untwisting your DNA untwisting the lineage. So you really don't, you're no longer connected to the lineage of your father and mother. Your lineage is 100% absolutely the father like Enoch. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Wow. So cool. So cool. I love it. Thank you for sharing everything. <laughs> My goodness. So, so, so amazing. Love you. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Ruth. Can I? Yes. Can I go go ahead, Albertina. Can you hear me, son? Yep. Um, I, I was uh, listening to um, Atterberg. He has a teaching on the high school. And I mean, I had a problem for many years about how we pray and, you know, your guests look like, actually I was afraid, to be honest with you. I was afraid, because I thought it was a new snake. So I found blah, blah, blah. But anyway, he had a, this teaching that he had on Leviathan and, and the, uh, the importance of Leviathan in our world, because it is, because through what the, the different aspects of the different ways that Leviathan works, it actually purifies and it actually make, brings us to the place that we're talking about. I know it's crazy, but if you listen to the whole thing, it just opened my eyes. And he was like, so why are you always binding and cursing? You're not supposed to be binding and cursing. Like, look at whatever it is that's been presented, the twistedness that is being presented in a situation or in your life, and then bring it before the Father, because by doing that, you are bringing the aspect of Leviathan under your feet rather than cursing and binding and so forth and so forth. He just looks and laughs. And then you look at the book of Job where the Lord says, I know where Leviathan lives. I can pull him out of, out of the seas with, um, through his nose. So if he is out to do a specific work, let him do his work. But you, I, I guess, like, um, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a very interesting mm. teaching on that whole of our That's amazing. Mm. <clears throat> that is really good, Albertina. 
Thank you for bringing that up. Anybody else have something you want to add? Yeah, go ahead, Shelly. Okay, I had to unmute it. Um, I just kept hearing, um, we eat giants for our bread. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I looked that up because when you were talking about when, when you're when you're having to deal with people that ripple your waters, so to speak, uh -huh. that's really good. Uh -huh. as you stay in that place of peace in, in, in your position in Yahweh, your, your peace will allow you to just eat those giants. Right. And then I looked up the whole verse and, and I have this amplified version and it, it made me think of the, the state of our, our nation right now and how, you know, you're seeing so many people running around going from misinformation to misinformation to maybe a little bit of truth here and a little bit of truth there. And then they're just like chickens with their head cut off and it's all a frenzy and a fear and everything. So the whole verse says, only do not rebel against the Lord, neither fear, fear the people of the land for they are bread for us. They mm. are, we, yeah. Their defense and the shadow of protection is removed from over them, but the Lord is with us, so fear them not. So that was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is so good. That yeah, is and, I, and I just want to honor you and thank you for sharing. This is my first time on, on this meeting and just perfect testimonies, perfect. Just it was good. It was so awesome. Thank you. Oh, and it's so good to have you with us too, Shelly. Thank you. you. Come again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, I, I, and I, I know I've already said this, but to what Shelly's even saying, I, I have to say it again. I think that this share, what you shared tonight and what the Lord had us do is so timely for all of us to be prepared for stepping into those places of with pure confidence you know, you even made a comment about wanting to get to the point that you don't ask anymore, have to know why or the reasons why, why this, why that, and you know, that kind of stuff. But actually, it was interesting because yesterday, yesterday morning, when I left to come to, to Nashville, um, I was, I was actually just kind of laughing at myself because here I am driving to Nashville by myself. And my husband so bravely says, yeah, baby, go ahead and go. Um, and I didn't even, it didn't click that it was even inauguration day and all that potentially crazy that was bursting could have broke, you know, and I didn't pay attention to all that. The Lord said, do it. So I did. Right. And so I'm actually in the car laughing at myself because I'm like, father, how could I have just like pulled the trigger? I mean, I, I should have just taken at least 24 hours to sit with you and, you know, make sure verify the verification of the verifier that I did hear you correctly. And, you know, text it out to somebody saying, okay, this is what I'm hearing. You know, are you given amen, confirmation, all this crazy calisthenics that we've learned we have to do, right? And, and so I'm laughing, thinking, I just pulled the trigger, like, and mm -hmm. he said, that is one of the things I love about you, is that you just are willing to pull the trigger, because I know his voice. And, but, but how often are we, are we willing to jump off that edge and trust ourselves? Because honestly, the only way you learn it is to tr do it. I mean, truly, that is the only way you learn it. You can't, you can't teach trust. You have to practice trust. Mm -hmm. Not only trusting our father, but trusting ourselves. Mm -hmm. That is a huge, we can talk all day long about how we trust the father, but do I trust me? that I hear his voice and, and get this, even when I make a mistake, he's still going to have me. Mm -hmm. Even if I miss it, he's still going to have me. He's still going to take care of me. 
but we have to we have to jump off that edge and trust ourselves in him and that is that is i think some most of the i, I want to go out on a limb i want to jump off an edge here and say that is most of the thing that holds us back not because we don't trust the lord but because we don't trust us and we must jump off that edge just jump off and the lord he's got us he has us and so we were having the best laugh on the way because of course that's all muscle memory right in in my being that's muscle memory of i should have you know taken 24 hours to think about it and ask the lord and all the calisthenics that we do and we've learned in Christianity that are the, the, you know, the, the litmus test, if I'm actually functioning with wisdom and in maturity is I'm going to take my time, make sure it's right, all that stuff. Well, how about if we start learning to trust ourselves in it? Yeah. Where would we go with that? What would we experience with that? I think that is definitely worth our exploring a bit. At least my opinion. So I loved when you said that, Tavita, because we were we were literally having the best laugh about it yesterday <laughs> um, on that very topic. Mm. So... Oh my goodness. Anybody else have anything else you want to add or say? Tavita, this was amazing. <laughs> it was just so good. So good. And it went right in hand with what the Lord wanted to do tonight with, with even what he had us do to, to kick it off. Mm. What an, how just incredible, incredible. Angela, Miss Bachelor, do you have something you want to add? <laughs> See your beautiful face. <laughs> Hi, this is Kimberly Whitman, the founder of Heart of the Bride Ministries. If this video has blessed you, I want to personally invite you to trade into Heart of the Bride and partner with us to become an essential part of what God is doing through Heart of the Bride Ministries. Your support enables us to continue to reach people all over the world. And we're seeing people from every corner of the globe coming into the realization of their oneness in Christ. We passionately want to see every person living from this reality of oneness in and with I am. He is truly transforming all of creation according to Father's desire and design. And to find out more about Heart of the Bride, go to www.heartofthebride.net. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her and I will be the glory in her midst.